In this video, I will show you how to self-host your own NA10 instance. I will show you how you can install and run NA10 on a VPS like DigitalOcean, but also on your laptop. And I will also show you how to manage your NA10 instance once it's running, such as upgrades, troubleshooting, and installing custom NPM packages. If you are new here, I'm Julian, and on Eat the Blocks, I give tips and tutorials for AI solopreneurs. Quick announcement, I run an AI automation agency for small and medium-sized businesses. If you are a business owner and you want to know how we can help your business with AI and automation, send us an inquiry. The link is down below. Okay, so why would you even self-host an NA10 instance? If you want to use NA10, the most simple is to use the hosted version of NA10. You pay a monthly fee and they manage NA10 for you. There are several issues with this. First, it can get costly, especially if you run a lot of automations or if you have a lot of customers. If you run an AI automation agency, it's better to have separate accounts for each customer, but it costs more money. Fortunately, NA10 also has an open source version. It has almost all the features of the hosted version and you can run it on your own server. The big advantage is the cost saving. You don't have to pay to use the software itself. However, you do have to pay to rent a VPS on a provider like DigitalOcean so that you can run anything. But even when you take into consideration this cost, the self-hosted version is significantly cheaper in general. Also, if you need to install separate NA10 instances, as long as they all fit on the same server, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Another big benefit is that you control better your data. Nobody can just shut down your account if they dislike your usage of NA10. This can be important if you are in a sensitive industry and it also offers better privacy, which is important for some industries like healthcare. And finally, when you self-host, you can customize your NA10 installation. For example, you can install any NPM package, which makes your workflows way more powerful and flexible. So let's see how to self-host NA10. The first option is to host NA10 on your laptop. This is a great option if you don't want to pay for a VPS and you just run very simple workflows. For that, you will need to install Docker. Docker is a software that makes it easy to run other software. To install Docker, you go to their website and download their installer. After running the installer, launch Docker Desktop. In Docker Desktop, you can see the Docker containers that are running. A container represents a software that is running with Docker or a part of a software like the backend or a frontend. During the Docker install, it also installed a command line tool. Next, we need to download the official Docker container of NA10. For that, open up a terminal window and type this command. When it has finished to download the container, you can run it with this command. Here, you can see the name of the container in your local Docker software. You can choose any name for this, it's just for your own reference. Here, you can see the reference of the official NA10 container. Here, you can see at which port the container is running. Copy this URL, go to your browser, and load the URL you just copied. And you should see this screen. It's going to ask you to create a new admin account. So you go through this process, you click on next, and you can skip this questionnaire. Next, it's going to ask you if you want to receive a free activation key for advanced features. It's just a marketing trick to get your email even when you self-host. I recommend to say yes so that you can get these advanced features. And once you are done with that, you can finally use NA10 and create workflows. To stop NA10, go to your terminal and press Ctrl C. There are two big downsides to running NA10 locally like this. The first one is that it can get difficult to use certain APIs that use OAuth like the Google APIs. That's because the OAuth APIs needs to send requests to your computer. When you run a VPS, that's not a problem. But when you use your own computer, by default, you cannot receive requests from the internet. You can fix this by using the tunnel service provided by NA10. But from my experience, it's very flaky and it doesn't work well. The other big downside when you run NA10 on your laptop is that you cannot run your workflow 24 seven because you will need to keep your laptop open all the time and it's not really feasible. This is why for most professional usage, people don't run NA10 on their laptop. Instead, they use what we call a VPS. So next, I will show you how to run an NA10 instance on a VPS. 
A VPS is a server that runs 24 seven and you can get a basic VPS from $6 per month. There are many hosting companies that provide VPS such as Linode and DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is beginner friendly because they provide ready to use VPS with pre-installed software, which saves you a lot of time in server configuration. So I recommend to use them when you get started. So you go to the website of DigitalOcean, you create an account in your dashboard, you go to the drive Droplet menu. Droplet is the term that DigitalOcean uses for VPS. You add a payment method, then you need to select where the droplet will be located, ideally somewhere close to you. Then you need to configure your image. And it's here that DigitalOcean shines because instead of starting from scratch, you can use one of their pre-built droplets. So you go to Marketplace and you pick the Anytain droplet. The Anytain software will already be installed on this droplet, so you won't have to configure anything anything. Keep in mind that this is provided by a third party. This is not an official droplet provided by the N10 team. Then you choose the CPU, memory and storage that you need. So you can just start with the lowest packages. If you ever need more capacity, it's always possible to upgrade later. Then you choose the authentication method. So this is to connect to the droplet. It has no relationship with your N10 account. You will rarely need to connect to the droplet directly except for the initial setup for upgrades or if you have some troubleshooting to do. I recommend SSH keys. This allows you to easily connect to your droplet in a secure way. So you click here and then you will have instructions for how to generate SSH key. And if you scroll down, you will see the instructions to add your SSH key to this droplet. I won't get into the details of how SSH work, but briefly, the public key is like your account number and the private key is like your password. Only share the public key, never the private key. So to get your public key, you have to execute this command. Depending on how you generated your SSH keys, your public key might be stored in a different file, like in my case. But in any case, you have to copy this public key and then you paste it in the interface of DigitalOcean. Then once you have added your public key, go back to the main menu, scroll down and you click on create. And once the droplet is created, you will get the IP to your droplet. If you try to load this IP, your browser is not going to work and that's because there is more setup to do. For that, you can have a look at the setup instructions for this N10 droplet. And it says that we need to point a subdomain to the IP of the droplet. So you have to buy a domain name, create a subdomain, and in your DNS editor, you have to add an A record that points to the IP of the droplet. It can take some time to propagate through the internet and you can track this using a DNS DNS lookup tool. Once the DNS tool shows the correct IP address, next we have to connect to our droplet for the initial setup. So in your console, you are going to run this command. So here we want to use the root user. It's like the admin of the server. And here we have the IP of the droplet. You press enter and then you should see this screen. And here we can see the setup screen of the N10 droplet. So first we have to tell it which subdomain we want to use. So let's enter our subdomain. And after we have to enter the domain name. So we press enter and after you should be able to load N10 in your browser by using the subdomain you just configured. And you will have to create your admin account like I showed you in the previous chapter of this video. So next, I will show you another way to install N10 without any pre-built droplet. But why would you do this? Because it seems more complicated. The problem with the method I showed you just before is that you depend on a hosting provider that already provides an N10 image. But if you want more flexibility, it's also possible to install N10 yourself. And in this case, you can use any hosting provider. So in DigitalOcean, I'm going to create a new droplet. So I'm going to choose the region closest to me. Then this time we will not go to the marketplace, but we will just choose a basic operating system. So we will choose Ubuntu. Then we're going to choose a basic share CPU. Then we're going to choose the $6 a month option. There is an even cheaper option, but I'm not sure this is going to be enough. So we're going to keep the $6 one. Then for the authentication method, we're going to keep the SSH key. Finally, we scroll down and we click on create. 
All right, so now it has been created and we can see the IP. And then we're going to follow these instructions from NN10. So NN10 has a ready to use setup with a server and an NN10 instance already connected to the server and everything is packaged with Docker Compose. So this makes it really easy to install NN10 on your VPS. All right, so we copy the IP, then we are going to SSH into our server. So then we're gonna check out the instructions and we need to create a new user to run NN10 because it's a bad practice to run any software with the root user. So we are back in our terminal and we create this new user that we call NN10. Then we need to give the sudo permission to this user so that it has administrative privileges, all right? Then it tells you that you need to configure SSH for this new user, but we are not going to do that. We already have SSH configured for the root user. However, once we are connected to the VPS, we can change the user. So now by using the sudo command, then we change to the home directory of the NN10 user. This is where we're going to do the install. So now back in the instruction, the next step is to clone the repository of the NN10 setup. So we do this. Then we go in the folder we just downloaded. So it contains the configuration for NN10 and the server that sits at the front end. So next, let's go back to the instructions and we have to create two Docker volumes. So this is where the data of NN10 is gonna be stored. But first, before we can use Docker, we need to install it. So this is a documentation of Docker and this is how you install it. So basically you have to follow the instruction. All right, so now Docker is installed and so we're gonna check that it's working fine with this command and this is working fine. So next we need to create the two Docker volumes. So one is for Caddy, the server, and the other one is for NN10 itself. So next you need to set up the DNS. So you need to point a domain name to our droplet. So for that, you copy the IP, then you go to your DNS provider and you add a, a record for your subdomain after you have to configure the port on your server, but that's only if your firewall is active. So in our case, it's inactive. So we don't need to do anything. After you need to configure the environment variables. So you need to use a code editor to do this configuration. In the NN10 documentation, they show you nano, but I prefer to use Vim, vim.env. And here we're gonna do some customization first. We customized the data folder. So this is where we downloaded NN10. After we need to customize the domain name after the subdomain, and then we save the file. So I use Vim. So to save the file is colon and WQ. So then we need to configure Caddy, which is the web server. So we need to open the Caddy configuration file. So that's in the Caddy config folder. And here we just replace this by our subdomain and we save this file. And finally, we need to start Docker Compose with this command. So it's going to download all the Docker images that we need and it's going to start NN10. All right, and so now, and we have an error here and it's probably a configuration problem with our server. So let's make sure that we know exactly in which folder we are. So we're gonna copy this, then let's reopen our .m file. Let's put, let's correct the data folder here. And so now it should be okay. So let's restart NN10. And so now it's working. So if you go to the front end, you should see this. So you will have to set up your admin account exactly like I showed you for when you install NN10 on your laptop. So now let's talk of how to manage your NN10 instance. If your NN10 instance crashes, Docker is going to restart it. But if for some reason it still doesn't fix the problem, there's another solution. So for this, you SSH to your server, then you stop the container with this command, then you restart the container with this command, and that should be fine. So next, I'm going to show you how to update your NN10 instance. So when there is a new NN10 version, you should see a message in the menu bar of NN10. So to update, you have to download the latest version of the NN10 Docker image. Then you have to stop the container. Then you restart the container and that's it. So next, I'm going to show you how to install new NPM packages to your NN10. 
So in NN10, you can use JavaScript in code nodes. In code nodes, it's also possible to use NPM packages, but you need to install them before. So for that, you go to your server, you stop your NN10 instance. Then let's see what we have in our Docker Compose file. So here we have the detail for the NN10 container. So it references the official NN10 container, but we're going to replace this by a custom container that we're going to create ourselves. So to create our custom container, we create a Docker file. Then we open this Docker file and we're going to start from a base and the base of our container will be the official NN10 image. So then with the user root, we are going to install the NPM packages that we need. So for example, if we just have one like Cheerio to do some scraping, this is going to be like this. But if you have several, then this is going to look like this. And after we're going to change to the user node and this user will run the NN10 software. Okay, so then we close this Docker file and then we open the configuration for Docker Compose and we're going to replace the official NN10 image by our custom image. So let's give this container a name. This is just a local name. Then we explain how to build this container. So this is in our Docker file. And we're also going to add an environment variable to allow the NPM package. And now we need to define this in a .env file. So let's save and close this. Let's open the .env file. And here we're going to define this. So this is equal to Cheerio package that we want to install. But if you have several packages, they're going to be separated with commas like this. All right, so let's save and exit this file. And now finally, we can restart our NN10 instance. So it's going to build the new Docker image that we configured. So it's going to take slightly more time than last time. And it's working. And now if you reload NN10 in the front end, it's going to work like before, except that now you can use the NPM package that you just installed. So NN10 is awesome and self-hosting gives it even more power. This is why I self-host all my automations and the automations of my customers. I also run an AI automation agency where I help businesses to grow faster and more efficiently with automated workflows. So if you are a business owner and you want to know how we can help Help your business with AI and automations, send us an inquiry. The link is down below. Nowadays, every business is rushing to become more efficient with automations. And if you ignore this, you will be left behind. All right, that's it for this video. Bye.